Hey, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And today I wanted to put out a video on the pre-launch, the importance of it, things that go into it, and why you wanna consider this if you're doing an upcoming Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, how this can help you in the long run, and why I think it's just so gosh darn critical. Hope you enjoy it. It's coming up right after this. Okay, so I've been talking about the pre-launch for a while and I documented this in my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula. It's something that I've heavily and extensively researched and something that I swear by because not only is it important in terms of getting funding initially with traction on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but it's also critical for a lot of the other things that I'm gonna be mentioning on today's video. So if you've never come to my videos before, my name is Salvador Brigman. I put out a lot of content on things like e-commerce, equity crowdfunding, rewards-based crowdfunding, occasionally donation-based stuff. And really, this is like a labor of love for me that I've been doing since 2012. It's one of the things that I enjoy doing most is teaching and sharing things and knowledge and that kind of stuff. I also do other things as well, like coaching, et cetera, helping with clients. But today, I really wanna focus in on this concept of a pre-launch. And let's first get into why this is important for you, why you should even consider it, and why is it worth your time. So. When you're looking to do a Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaign, there are a few reasons maybe behind that. Maybe you want to get funding. Maybe you want to get traction. Maybe you want to discover product market fit. You might want to get some solidity on pricing. Um, maybe you want to speed up the process to actually launch a product. Maybe you want to connect with key partners when you, they see you've had a really successful campaign. There are a lot of reasons why you might be looking to do a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo campaign. But I tell you, one of the most common ones is that everyone wants success right out of the gate, right? No one wants to have slow levels of success. Maybe if you're in a creative category or this is more of a hobby for you, right? Or you're just trying to like do the first small campaign and you're okay with that, great. But a lot of my students and a lot of my clients are really trying to swing for the fences. Like they want a big major campaign. The kinds of campaigns that I document on my podcast, the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast, which I publish here a version of on YouTube. And I also publish a more extensive version on Spotify and also on iTunes, uh, crowdcrux.com slash iTunes, I believe it is. Um, so you can go and check it out there. But when it comes to this, one of the most important things is to have a really strong start right out of the gate, right? And the reason why is that when you have a strong start, not only does that create instant social proof, and I can talk about that in just a second, but also it allows you to trend really well in the algorithm on Kickstarter and also the, the GoGo Factor algorithm on Indiegogo. So basically it accomplishes two things, right? but it also does a lot more, which you may not even be aware of. So first I'm gonna cover these two, and then I'm gonna kind of get into some of the other things you might not be aware of. So first one, most obvious. How do you get strangers backing your Kickstarter campaign, right? It's very rare that someone will buy a book. They go to a bookstore, right? They're looking through and they're browsing different books in Barnes & Noble, or looking on their Kindle, and they buy a book with no reviews. Or they buy a book where it doesn't have any kind of accolades, it's not recommended by anyone, it doesn't even look super great, right? They're probably not gonna buy that book or even be likely to read the first chapter to consider buying that book. And that's just kind of how human beings operate. However, if they go into a bookstore and they see one book, it has rave reviews by a lot of other authors they love, it's a bestseller on the New York Times bestseller list or a Wall Street Journal, and it's placed front and center in that Barnes and Noble store, chances are they're at least gonna take a look, right? They're at least gonna open, crack the thing open, maybe read the first couple of pages and be like, I like this, sounds interesting or not. Or they might read the back jacket or do what I love to do, which is just sit there with a cup of coffee and read for a good 30 minutes, just kind of immerse myself in the book. I love doing that, it's one of my favorite things, right? So you're probably not gonna be likely to sample something or to consider buying something or to pay attention to something unless other people are in some way indicating it's worth your time. Same thing goes with movies, right? So if you see uh, a listing, let's just say in old school days, you'd open up your newspaper, right? And you'd see all these listings for movies that are gonna be playing. And if you hadn't heard of them, you might be less likely to wanna see one of those movies. But if you see a movie and like everyone's recommended it, your friends have recommended it, you saw it like, was it on track to win an Oscar? So many commercials about it. Everyone's loving this thing, right? you're gonna be more likely to pick that movie that you're gonna see on a Friday night, maybe with your significant other. 
And the reason is because other people are saying it's worth your time. It's legit. It's, it's going to be a good movie. And you don't want to waste your time, right? So this is the concept in marketing that we call social proof. Social proof is when people come to a Kickstarter page or an Indiegogo page and because of the funding that's already there or because of the marketing in the way of the comment section, because other people have already backed it, they are more likely to watch the video, click play and at least allow themselves to experience the marketing, which is to watch the video. Or they're going to take a little bit of time to scroll down the page and actually look at what is this product? Like why, what's all the, the hype about, right? They start to get curious. That's the emotion we use to describe it. They start to get curious. So social proof, number one, creates curiosity and it allows people to go down the page and learn more. Number two, it's also great, in my opinion, for kind of being like a trust factor, a built in trust factor that because all these other people backed it and other people funded it, it's probably somewhat legit. You know, at least it's probably past the BS test where you know that if you're at least going to back it, you're not a fool, right? You, you are at least throwing in with these other people who seem like they have already reviewed it. So it's kind of a mental shortcut that people will use to be a trust signal with that campaign. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of nefarious marketers, and I do not fall into that camp, might use it duplicitously. But for the average person who's just trying to sell their own product they made, you should know about this concept of social proof. So it does that. That's one of the most important things because it allows then new strangers who are coming and checking out the campaign, maybe from Kickstarter or from your advertising or from your social media marketing to make a quick decision that, yeah, I want to be a part of this. I want to back it. I want to at least watch the video without it. They might not. And they're likely not to, if they come to the page and there's zero, the big goose egg, right? They're probably not going to be willing to watch the video or spend time even on the page very much. The other thing that I mentioned is ranking well on Kickstarter Indiegogo. Now these algorithms that they use are proprietary, similar to like Amazon or Google or Facebook. They're never actually going to tell you what comprises these different algorithms because as they did, marketers like myself would use it and, you know, do amazing things. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, just like one of those things. It's, it's a trade secret. It's proprietary knowledge. What I can tell you is that I've witnessed a lot of campaigns be successful. And I've worked with a lot of campaigns. I've coached a lot of campaigns and these are my take, my personal takeaways and thoughts as it relates to the algorithm. So the first thing is that it's not about, um, how much funding you get over a long duration. It's about how much rush of funding you get in a short period of time. And this is called the velocity of pledges, the velocity of pledges. And there are different places documented where Kickstarter and Indiegogo both indicate that this is part of their algorithm. There are other components as well. Things that go beyond what an average person would know without knowing inner workings of the company. However, I suspect other things. For example, if you are a project we love, if you have a very high conversion rate on the page, if you have a lot of people who check out and click it and then back it probably also going to be factoring in to the algorithm. But the main one, is velocity of pledges as it relates to the pre-launch. Why is that important? Here's why velocity of pledges is all about how much funding are you getting in a small period of time, the velocity, the speed at which they're coming in. So let's just say you raise hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And let's just say you have, I don't know, 500 backers. Okay. Or we can even say like a thousand backers if you want to make it that number. And that happens, we'll say over the course, of 60 days that you get that amount of funding and that number of backers. Great. Awesome. That's a certain level of velocity of pledges. And we'll say that's example a, okay. Example B is someone who raises the same amount, gets the same number of backers. However, instead of that happening over the course of 60 days, that happens over the course of three days. There's a higher velocity of pledges in that example. More people are coming in quickly, putting in money, backing it, recommending it, right? That is going to cause that project B to shoot up in the rankings on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and have a much higher degree of visibility on the platform. Now, the other thing is that again, this is a lot of this is conjecture, but also my own understanding of my own studying. It also relates to the other projects that are currently running on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, right? So for example, if you have another project 
that's in your category and similar and has a higher velocity of pledges, chances are they're gonna be more popular than you, at least in the ranking algorithm. But there are other factors which I can get into, like for example, you might be recommended on their project when after someone backs it. But that, that kind of goes beyond today's video. So pre-launch is great because it accomplishes those two things right out of the get-go, which is you get a rush of funding, right? And you also get that instant social proof. Now there are some other things, like I said, that you may or may not be aware of as a creator that I would love to take a second to share with you now. And also, if you haven't yet, go and check out my audio book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, where I document and go into a lot of the specifics here. Or you can reach out to me on my website, crowdcrux.com. Great place to go um, because this is my podcast, all these other things, I got a lot of stuff going on. But that being said, let's get back to the point here. So when it comes to this, right? So you, you first of all, you have the first two reasons why you should be doing a pre-launch. What's sort of like a hidden thing that um, you may not or may not be aware of? A lot of people when I'm working with them for the first time, typically think that they're going to Kickstarter to discover product market fit. And that's true to a degree. However, the pre-launch is also incredible because it allows you to see in real time, do people respond to, with interest to your campaign or not? It's binary. You will, if you're working with the right person, be able to tell instantly how are people responding to the actual product offer. And that's, that's really credible. I mean, that's, to me, insane because in the olden days, it would cost you like tens and tens of thousands of dollars to even do a market study to find that out. However, nowadays working with the right people, you can discover that really freaking quickly, right? So it's one of the hidden reasons why the pre-launch is such a good idea to do is that it will allow you to diagnose issues and problems ahead of time before you do this full big blown launch on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. What are some of the issues that might crop up? I kind of like to think of this, and I know this is strange, but I kind of like to think of myself almost as a scientist, okay? So I think of myself as in the same way like a doctor or a lawyer might review data and information and diagnose problems and issues. I look at marketing in a very similar light. So let's just say we're doing a pre-launch, right? And we discover that for whatever reason, the photos or the creatives is not really resonating very well at all with the audience. That is an issue that we then need to diagnose and figure out, okay, what is the issue here? How can you have better creatives or photos so that when you go live with your campaign, it's not gonna fall flat, right? So we just solved and diagnosed an issue. We create maybe better creatives or higher resolution photos or better have a, a model in them or a person. Take a little bit more time, you do it again, you find out now that has a really good product market fit, you diagnose and you solve the problem ahead of time, which is not gonna bite you when you go live with your campaign. Another example, very simple, would be um, with one of the campaigns that I was working on, we had a great landing page, it was converting, however, it wasn't like as well as I would like. I have certain KPIs which I judge myself against, and if it's not within the realm of my KPI, I'm usually not happy, and I'm like, we gotta go back to the drawing board, you know? And those are certain standards. Every marketer should have standards, right? If you're not hitting that standard, there's probably an issue that can be debunked or de debugged. So with this particular example, we changed the angle to the product, focused on one feature of the product instead of all the other ones. And you know, conversions started to skyrocket on the landing page and it worked a heck of a lot better, right? So that is an example of an issue where had you go live with the campaign and you're just thinking, you're keeping the idea in your head, right? and you think it's gonna be good, you think it's gonna work, you go live, and then all of a sudden comes into contact with reality, and you're like, oh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea, right? <laughs> that maybe that wasn't the way to go. But with the pre-launch, you discover that ahead of time, right? So you're able to diagnose that potential issue, solve it, then you go live, and there are less headaches, and there's more synergy and product market fit between the audience and between you, the creator, and you know the brand, obviously, that's putting out the product. So I'd say that's another hidden benefit, if you will, which is being able to diagnose issues ahead of time. Makes things a lot easier. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. 
the top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfill Right today. Link in the description. Another thing that I will share that's kind of like, again, more of a hidden thing that you might not be aware of um, has to do with like who you actually think your customer is. And this can always be a little bit touchy, I think, because as creators and as innovators or as individuals, like we all are trying to create products that we love and that our customers love, right? However, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes the people that you thought would really want to buy this product end up not being the ones who want to. And like this other customer group is working really well, or this other audience is working super well. And again, I call this keeping the idea in your head for too long. When it's in your head for too long and it's not coming to contact with reality and you're not getting real world data, you don't know. You're, you're just kind of stabbing in the dark. You know, you're, gra you're grasping straws. And for a lot of people out there, they're mainly relying on what other people are telling them on their previous business experience. Or if you know they've been fortunate enough to maybe have one or two product testers, what those people have kind of given feedback as. But the majority of people out there are just kind of like you know, grasping at straws and not really that sure of which audiences are going to do best. They have a hypothesis. Remember going back to science, they have a hypothesis, but they haven't yet tested that hypothesis. And they believe they're going to test that when they go live with their Kickstarter Indiegogo. What I'm saying is that that's true, but you can also test it ahead of time and it will save you a lot of grief, right? And it will also make it so that you improve your marketing very quickly early on versus when you're live with your Kickstarter Indiegogo campaign. So I would say again, say that is another hidden benefit. There are a lot more, I'll be honest with you, there are so many more reasons why this is a good idea, but I think those are kind of like the main ones that I really want to share in today's video. Um, I have a lot of other great videos out there that actually detail how to do a pre-launch and those kinds of things. So if you haven't yet, go and check out some of my other videos, right? Um, if you wanna just kind of download all of this really quickly, you can check out my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, and download the Audible version, which I'll include a link down below. Also got a free course, uh, on crowdfunding and Kickstarter that you can check out. Some cool stuff there. And if you wanna reach out to me, just go to my website, crowdcrux.com. You can contact me there, shoot me an email. I won't guarantee that I can reply immediately. I get a lot of inflow and it really kind of depends on how busy I am, quite frankly. But I really do appreciate you and I hope that this video has been useful for you and that at least you start to think a little bit differently maybe about this phase and about why this is something you should be paying attention to before you go live with your campaign. So again, one of my favorite parts of um, doing this is being able to see success stories and uh, have people on my show, my podcast and these things. So if you end up being successful, you can always reach out to me. I'll consider having you on the show. Love to have audience success stories. I've had a lot of them over the years on the show. Would be awesome. Uh, but thank you so much for listening. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video so other people know who haven't yet had the chance to watch my content. Um, give me a subscription if you want my regular content coming out straight to you. And also leave a comment if you got a question. I'll try to get to it. I've been kind of behind on the comments recently just because I've been so freaking busy, man. But um, I do appreciate the love. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Sal and I will see you next time.